Silve! A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver! The Lone Ranger! With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. On, Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I'll Silver! Hooray! The small boom town of Brockton was the gathering place for the miners who had swarmed to that point in the far west when news of a gold strike had spread like wildfire only a few months before. And within that short period of time, newly erected buildings sprang up along the dusty main street, the largest and most pretentious of which was the Nugget Cafe. The men who frequented the cafe worked hard all day in their avid search for gold. But in the early evening, their findings were quickly dissipated over the bar and gaming tables. Up to a month before, Brockton had been lawless. But after two raids by Arizona Pete and his gang had practically cleaned out the town, Big Bill Walters had been elected sheriff. From that time on, Big Bill took his place at the end of the long bar in the cafe facing the door, ever ready and determined to thwart any further attempts by Arizona Pete to rob the cafe and the miners. Say, Bill... Brockton's sure been mighty peaceful since you took over as sheriff. And as long as I'm sheriff, I aim to keep it that way, too. Hey, bartender, want to have a drink, will you? Why, oh, sure. Coming right up, stranger. I guess I haven't seen you around here before. That's right, sheriff. You haven't. Just come to Brockton? Well, now you might say I'm just passing through, sheriff. All right, here you are. Thanks. Here's to you, sheriff. Uh, have one, Sheriff? No, thanks. I'm not drinking tonight, stranger. Oh, just sort of standing here keeping your eye out for trouble, is that it? That's it. <laughs> Expecting trouble from anybody in particular? Well, I'm ready for trouble no matter who starts it, stranger. What's more, I might add... Hey, it must be Arizona Pete this case. Get your guns ready, Ben. He won't get away with it this time. Get him now when he comes forward. Oh, Wait a minute, all in. What the... Quiet, Sheriff. I got this gun in your back. Now, listen to me. The cafe's surrounded. Our men are at every window, ready to blast anyone who makes a move. Take a look for yourself. Hey, hey, look, they got guns poked through the open windows. Yeah, that hombre's got the drop on the sheriff. You won't get away with this, you double-crossing skunk. <laughs> Fooled you, didn't you, Sheriff? Hey, that's him, all right. Yeah, it's Arizona Pete in his gang. Here we are again, folks. <laughs> Guess we sort of took you all by surprise, didn't we, huh? Yeah, walk right in here. Sure is a shame to make a fool of your sheriff like this, especially with him just laying in wait for us to show up. 
All right, boys. A couple of you get gold from the safe back there. The rest of you go around and see what all these galoots have to contribute. Sure. We ought to get a good haul. Come on. I ain't standing by to see that thief and hombre and his coyotes clean everybody out. <laughs> Just what are you going to do about it, Sheriff? It's this. Oh. Hey, you got the sheriff. Hey, rush him, man. Let him have it, boy. Later that night, the sheriff, who had been taken to his home lay on the couch in the living room in critical condition. His wife and young daughter Jane stood nearby as the doctor turned from the wounded man. How, how bad is it, doctor? Molly, it's no use lying to you. Bill's in a bad way. Oh, poor Bill. Don't cry, Ma. Molly. Molly. I'm right here, Bill. I... I'm done for Molly, but but I did my best. Did the did the outlaws clean out the town? Yes, Bill, they did. Cafe is a shambles. A lot of the miners were wounded. Some bad. If, if we only had a son, someone who who could go after Arizona Pete and get him for what he's done. Never mind, Bill. Just remember you did your duty for Brockton. Someday somebody will get that outlaw and his gang and see that they hang. Dad, I, I heard what you said. Oh, Jeannie. You mustn't mind what I said about wanting a son. It's only that... Dad, you, you don't need a son. I'll see that Arizona Pete hangs for what he's done. Jean... What are you saying? You, a mere slip of a girl, barely 18. Just forget about it, Jane. You could... <laughs> Take it easy, Bill. Jane, you... You mustn't try it. <laughs> Molly. Molly, have... Molly. He's gone. Oh, Bill. <laughs> Dad, maybe I, I am just a girl, but but I won't give up until I hunt down Arizona Pete and his gang and, and see everyone on the hang for what they've done to you. Meanwhile, in the general store, the townsmen were having a meeting to discuss the raids. A husky young miner named Jim Mercer had taken the floor. Quiet. Quiet, everybody. You all know what a beating we took from Arizona Pete and his gang tonight. Cafe's wrecked. A lot of our men were hurt bad, including the sheriff, Big Bill Walters. Besides that, the outlaws got away with all our money again, just like they did twice before. Yeah, that's right. Looks like them outlaws got us buffaloed. Not much use staying around, Brockton. No. Wait a minute, I ain't finished. Seems to me if the sheriff had been on his toes, Arizona Pete and his gang couldn't have taken us all by surprise like they did. What do you mean? Instead of going out and hunting for him, the sheriff just hung around at the cafe waiting for him to show up again. Right. Now it's up to us to do something about it. What can we do about it, mister? Yeah. We can do something that Big Bill Walters should have done and didn't. That's what. What? And just what was it my father didn't do, Jim Mercer? Why, uh, hello, Jane. I didn't expect you to come here. I want to hear what you were going to say. Go on, say it. All right, I will. What I was about to say was that we ought to form a posse and go out and try to track down those outlaws. That's what the sheriff should have done and didn't. That's right. Maybe all this wouldn't have happened to us. Listen to me, ma'am. The reason I came here was to tell you my... My father is dead. Dead? Gosh, Gina. I'm sorry to hear that. Are you? I wonder. I still say he didn't do the right thing, though. Now, you all heard what Jane Walters said. It means we don't have a sheriff. But if you want me to take charge, I'll form a posse and start a hunt for those outlaws. Oh, say, yeah. That's the spirit, Jim. I'm for Get out of Good. We'll start out first thing in the morning. 
I'll lead the posse and we'll search the hills for the outlaw hideout. And I'm going with the posse. You? Don't be crazy, Jean. Young girls like you have no place riding with a posse. You'd just be in the way. Jim Mercer, I, I swore that I'd hunt for Arizona Pete and his gang and, until I found for what they did to my father. You just leave it to us, Jean. They're to be found, we'll find them. We don't need the help of a girl. Then you refuse to let me go along. Is that it? That's it. We haven't time to take care of you. You'd need taken care of if we met up with Arizona Pete and his outlaws. We ain't a-riding with any girl in the posse. Stay home with the women, folks. Imagine her wanting to hunt for Arizona Pete. <laughs> All right, I, I'll stay home, but, but if the posse doesn't find those outlaws, I'm going to start a search and I won't give up till I find them. <laughs> It was two weeks later. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were riding the trail about ten miles to the west of Brockton. As they followed the winding trail through the hills, they were suddenly startled by a shot. Oh, 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 that was close, Tonto. Look here. Ah, bullet put hole through half brim. Yes. Shot seemed to come from up there to the left. From among those rocks on the side of that hill. Maybe them try again, Kimasabi. Oh, I'm ready. Look. Sun gleam on gun bow. Yes, I see it. Maybe I can... Sound like girls scream up there. Yes, come on. Get them on, Come on, Stop it. Come out from behind those rocks. Look, Kimasabi. Someone come out. Look like young boy. Oh, Silver. Oh, 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 fella. Oh, fella. You shot the gun from my hand, but, but I'm not afraid of it. Steady, big fella. Why? Why, you're a girl. Yes, I'm a girl. Why did you shoot at us? You have nerve to ask me that. Anyone can see you're an outlaw with that mask on, and and I'm sure you're one of Arizona Pete's gang. Well, that's where you're wrong. I'm not an outlaw, nor am I connected with Arizona Pete. In fact, I never heard of him. <laughs> you're lying, and I know it. Everybody around here knows of Arizona Pete. He's raided Brockton often enough for you to know. We were heading for Brockton when you shot at us. We've come from farther west. Tell me... What are you, a young girl, doing out here in the hills alone? If, as you say, there's a gang of outlaws around. Arizona Pete and his gang pulled a surprise raid on Brockton, in spite of the fact that the sheriff had planned to trap them. When he was killed, I, I swore to track them down myself. Well, girl, no match for gang of outlaws. That's right, Tonto. Those outlaws would have disarmed her as quickly as we did. Well, I... You'd better leave the outlaws to the men of Brockton. I'm sure they've formed a posse to hunt them. They did at the time... That was two weeks ago, but they've given up the hunt. I'm going to keep on until I find Arizona Pete. Anyway, everybody in town laughed at me when I said I was going to round up the outlaws. If I go back and give up, they, they'll laugh all the harder. I'm sure they all know a girl like you couldn't cope with a band of outlaws. Why are you so determined to track them down alone? Because they killed my father. He was sheriff of Brockton. Oh, I see. And you must be Miss Walters. That's right. I'm Jane Walters, but... I'm very sorry about your father, Jane. Maybe we can help you in your hunt for Arizona Pete's gang. You? Why should you want to help? How do I know that you're not one of them? I told you we were on the way to Brockton when you shot at us. I have a message I was bringing to Sheriff Walters from the United States Marshal at Silver City. A message to my father? Yes. Here's a note I was to give him. You see, your father appealed to the marshal for help in catching a gang of outlaws who had repeatedly raided Brockton. It must have been Arizona Pete and his men. Yes, it was. Uh, may I see that note? Yes, of course. Hmm. The U.S. Marshal says for Dad to trust you and, and that you'd help him. That's right. That was our purpose in coming here. Then I can trust you. Will you really help me track down the outlaws? Of course, Jane. Oh... Tonto and I are going to pitch camp over there in the hills. You come along with us and we'll have supper. Before you go home for the night, I'll tell you of a plan I have that may bring the outlaws into the open. Then we'll meet in the morning to carry out our plan. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. After having supper in the newly made camp, the Lone Ranger discussed the plan he had in mind. Then he and Tonto accompanied Jane Walters to the edge of town. Following instructions, Jane rode on into town and entered the general store where a small group of men were usually gathered. Well, here comes Jane Walters. Maybe she's got Arizona Pete hog tied outside. Yeah, he's around the wall, Jane. Yeah. Maybe you won't laugh when I tell you what I found out. You look excited, Jane. What have you found out? I think we have a chance to capture Arizona Pete and his gang. <laughs> I thought you were going to capture them by yourself, Jane. Stop trying to be funny, Jim Mercer. I said I'd track them down. Now it's up to the posse to round them up. Wait a minute. Are you trying to say that you found their hideout? Not exactly, but I do know where two men, one of them masked, had their camp. I heard them talking. They're making camp for the night, but, but they expect someone to take them to the outlaw's hideout in the morning. Are you sure about that? Yes, I am. If you men have a posse ready to ride by dawn, I'll lead you to the vicinity of their camp. Then, when they meet the man who is to lead them to the hideout, we can follow and surprise the whole gang. Well, let's get some men together and go right now to that camp and grab them. Maybe we can get something out of them. No, no, it's better to wait till they start with a guide to the hideout in the morning. Jane's right. Get the men together and have them ready to ride at dawn. the Lone Ranger and Tonto waited in a clump of cottonwoods on the edge of town. A short time after Jane had gone into Brockton with her story, Tonto spoke to the masked man in a low tone. Kimo Sabi. Yes? You hear horse. Come plenty fast. I don't hear anything, Tonto. I think you... Yes, I hear it now. <laughs> Quiet, Silver. Quiet, boy. Glad her not see us in dark. Must be the one who was doing the spying in town for Arizona Pete. Ah, you think he'll go to outlaw hideout? Yes, we'll follow him. Then you can go back with a message to Jane Waller. Uh, uh, Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Toward that opening. He must hobby. Yes. Look. Right, right into place and cliff. That's it, Toto. There must be a cave in there. The creek flows into it and covers our trail. Ah, and what we do now? You ride back to Brockton. Tell Jane to have the posse follow you back here right away. Here, give her one of these silver bullets. One of the men there will know what it means. Ah. One thing more. I'm sure they have a supply of heavy oil at the general store. Tell the men to put a couple of barrels of that oil on the buckboard and bring it along. Now get going, Toto, and hurry. Meantime, the man whom the Lone Ranger and Tonto had trailed from town had entered a rather large cavern which served as the hideout for Arizona Pete and his outlaws. A few minutes later, the outlaw leader and the man were in earnest conversation. So the sheriff's daughter is going to lead a posse to the camp where those two hombres are, hmm? That's right, Pete. I thought I ought to warn you. The posse's going to wait till the two men you're expecting start out for here with the guide you send. The posse will trail him here. Yeah. I suppose that's the idea. Only... Only what? I wasn't expecting any two hombres, and I ain't sending any guide to bring them here. What? Not expecting anyone. But Jane Walter I don't care you... what she said. It ain't so. Mercer, maybe you ain't as smart as I thought you were. Maybe that girl's pulling some sort of a trick on you. Trick? No, she can't be, Pete. She trusts me, just like the others do. She doesn't suspect anything. <laughs> That's what you think. That's what I know, Pete. Jane Walters is silly in the first place. She wouldn't set out to hunt down a bunch of outlaws single-handed. No woman would, much less a young girl. But you must admit, Jim, that's just what she did. And she's persistent. As far as I can make out, that girl's run onto something. It's up to you to find out just what. That's what I planted you in that town for, to keep ahead of every move they make and let me know. I have let you know, haven't I? Warned you about the sheriff's plan, and because of that, you were able to walk off with everything in the town for the third time. Sure, I know, but that don't mean that... Uh, look out, I posted the entrance, spotted somebody. Come on. Hey, 
What's he shooting for? Well, I saw somebody on a white horse, Pete. I can see him plain as day. He rode down the edge of the creek. He's uh, behind that big rock back there. I'll take another shot just for luck. You sure you saw somebody? If you did, that means you must have followed Jim here. Nobody followed me, Pete. Now, look. I saw somebody. If you don't believe me, ride up to that big rock and find out for yourself. Why should I risk getting filled with lead? You're so sure nobody followed you, there's no reason for you to think you will get filled with lead, Mercer. Try another shot up that way, Ed. See what happens. Sure, Pete. See? What did I tell you? What's going on, Pete? Who's doing the shooting? Hey, how'd they find the Take it easy, man. Seems like some hombre followed Jim Mercer here. He's up the creek behind that big rock. Yeah. And I say that Mercer ought to be the one to ride up the creek and get him out of there. Not me. This bright moonlight, you'd prick me off easy. Well, we got to do something. I know just what it is. What? Several of you can wade through the opening on foot. And come out on either side of the creek and sneak up on that hombre from both sides. All right, Mercer. You lead off. The rest of you follow him. Keep your guns handy. If you move carefully, you can move up on him without him suspecting. And shoot him down. Now get going. After a hard and fast ride, Tonto reached Brockton and sought out Jane Walters, giving her the Lone Ranger's message along with a silver bullet. Jane persuaded the townsmen to gather once again in the general store, but they were skeptical. How do we know the girl really found something? We scoured them hills for two days. I just she knows something. Oh, please listen to me, all of you. I've had word that the hideout of the outlaws has been found. If you want to get Arizona Pete and his gang, a posse must ride tonight. Earlier this evening, you told us to form a posse and ride at dawn. Now you tell us you found out where they're hiding, you want us to ride tonight. Yeah. Who told you about the hideout being found? Yeah. An Indian. He's waiting outside to lead you to the outlaw's place. And you must take along the heavy oil he asked for. Now, just a minute, man. Just a minute. Jane, I was there when your dad died. I heard you make your promise to track down Arizona Pete. With all this talk about an Indian and all, well, you can't blame the man for hesitating. What's more, I can't see any sense in cotton barrels of oil along with the posse. Where's Jim Mercer? Let's see what he has to say. I happen to know that a man rode out from Brockton tonight to warn the outlaws. It's a man who's been here in town as one of Arizona Pete's spies. Jim Mercer isn't anywhere in town and... I'm inclined to think he's the one who went to the outlaw's hideout tonight. Now, wait a minute, man. Quiet down. Jane, you just can't say things like that without proof. How do we know? In fact, how do you know that somebody went to warn the outlaws? Because he was followed by the Indian. And by another man. A, a man I trust. I, well, look here. Does this mean anything to anyone here? Well, it looks like a bullet. It's a silver bullet, seems like. It is a silver bullet. The man I spoke of sent it by the Indian. Uh, just a minute. Let me see that, Jane. Here. Mm, I guess what you say is true after all. Man, this silver bullet changes everything. Take my word for it, you can trust the man who sent it to Jane. Well, Please you? hurry. There's no time to lose. Get your horses, men. I'll ride with you. Now get going. Put those oil barrels on the buckboard. We'll follow the Indian. <laughs> As time wore on, the Lone Ranger held his own against the outlaws who filtered through the cliff opening and spread out amongst the rocks along the banks of the creek. But they were gradually closing in from both sides, and the Lone Ranger realized his position was dangerous. Hope they can hold up until the posse arrives. Easy, boy. Easy. Well, Silver, my last round of bullets. I don't... The posse... Hey, Toto. You all right? Yes. I couldn't have held out much longer. Outlaws going back in cave. The girl, what's she doing here? Not able to make girls stay home. She followed posse. Oh. oh, here you are. Well, we got here as soon as we could. They were hard to convince that, that the doctor recognized the meaning of the silver bullet and persuaded them to come. Good. But you shouldn't have come here. Stay down behind this rock. The outlaws have all gone back into the cave. We'll have to find a way to get them out. Did you bring that oil? I sure did, but we can't figure out what you expect to do with it. This creek flows into that cave where the outlaws are holding out. Get the men to unload the oil here behind this big rock. Then we'll dump the oil into the creek and set it afire. The water will carry the flaming oil and then smoke right into their stronghold. Well, I'll be. I'll get the man to bring the oil here right away. Good. And they can pour it into the water and light it while Tom and I keep the opening covered with our guns. Hurry, man, hurry. <laughs> Hurry. 
working with feverish haste, the men lifted the two barrels of oil from the buckboard and carried it to the point where the Lone Ranger was waiting. Then opening the barrels, they poured the heavy oil into the creek. As the thick black oil spread out over the water, the Lone Ranger twisted some of the tall dry grass into a torch, lit it, and tossed it into the creek. In a few seconds, the oil burst into flame, and both flames and dense black smoke floated down the creek and into the cave opening. Turn alive! Look at that smoke! That'll bring him out! The master and sure had a great idea. I hope there's no other opening into the cave. I feel certain there isn't. There were. They have used it before now. You think it'll work? We'll soon find out. There's a lot of smoke going into that cave. The smoke's taking effect. Listen. It's Jim Mercer. Just as I thought. He was the spy who was planted in Brockton for Arizona Pete. Hey, we've got to have him! We give up! Come out one by one with your hands up. Otto, have somebody take their gun. Uh-huh. We get them. All right, man, round them up. I guess you can handle things from now on. Oh, oh wait, you, you have to see me back to town. Huh? You'll have plenty of company back to town without him, Jane. And what's more, they'll all be mighty proud to ride with you. Because of you keeping your promise, we've rounded up Arizona Pete and his whole gang. It it wasn't I who did it, Doctor. It was that masked man. He was so wonderful. And and to think I don't even know who he is. (laughs) Wouldn't do you any good if you did know, Jane. So don't go setting your heart on him. You see, when you showed me that silver bullet, I knew right away it came from the Lone Ranger. Oh, Doctor. I'll send you there. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.